guys, Mo Long with Electromaker here, and I am really excited to take a look at the Orange Pi Prime. It is a single board computer and a Raspberry Pi alternative that shares a little more in common with the Raspberry Pi than just the fruit filled name. Like the Raspberry Pi, the Orange Pi Prime does have a 40 pin GPIO header. So it's compatible with a lot of the same accessories. You'll find an all-winner H5 quad-core Cortex A53 CPU, Mali 450 GPU with Open GLESS 2.0 support and Open VG 1.1 support. It's outfitted with 2 gigs of DDR3 RAM. There's a micro SD card slot. You'll find Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, a CSI input for camera connections, and you'll also find a 3.5 millimeter audio jack and HDMI output. So I was pleasantly surprised at the number of operating systems available for the Orange Pi Prime. Right here I'm running Ubuntu Desktop, but you'll also find Debian Desktop and Debian Server images for the Orange Pi Prime, as well as several Android operating systems that you can install on the Orange Pi Prime. This release of Ubuntu is running the XFCE desktop environment, and it came pre-loaded with a lot of really useful software, including GNOME Implayer and Audacity, which is pretty key for me as a podcaster. So I was actually thinking about keeping the Orange Pi Prime around maybe as a an audio editing desktop. So let's take a look though at what the hardware can actually do and run a few benchmarks. So first up we're going to run the CPU Blowfish benchmark Generally speaking, you're going to find performance about on par with an Intel Celeron M 1.5 gigahertz processor. So ultimately, that's not going to win a lot of benchmarking contests, but for the price, which is about $40, that's pretty good. And it remains competitive with most of the other single board computers that you'll find in that price range, like the Raspberry Pi 3. One of the main differences, though, is that the Raspberry Pi still has easily the most community support and compatible operating systems, resources, etc. I was able to get a kit from AliExpress that included a case and a power supply, which I definitely recommend doing simply because unlike a lot of the other maker boards that you can get, the Orange Pi Prime uses a barrel jack instead of a micro USB cable for its power supply. So you can see here, our results are in seconds and lower is better. And the Orange Pi Prime scored 51.93. So that's not quite at the same level as a Celeron M processor running at 1.5 gigahertz, but it is better than a PowerPC 740 or 750 at 280 megahertz. Next up, let's try CPU CryptoHash. This isn't a machine that you'd at all want to mine cryptocurrency on, even though I was able to set up a Raspberry Pi as a cryptocurrency miner. That was purely an experiment for fun because I'm interested in the cryptocurrency space, but it's not a profitable venture. Still, it can totally be a quick, easy project to learn more about Raspberry Pi hardware, Linux software and cryptocurrency mining in general. So with our CPU crypto hash benchmark, we have higher is better and we got 20.27. So that's not all that high. That's actually pretty low, but 
for a board this size, that's about what you can expect. Let's check out the CPU Fibonacci benchmark. There are a lot of really cool applications that you can use in Orange Pi Prime 4. I'm thinking about keeping mine around as just a basic Linux desktop, like I mentioned, for stuff like recording podcast episodes, general web browsing. But I'm also really excited to spin up an Android desktop on this and maybe turn it into an arcade. So, again, we have results in seconds. Lower is better. And the performance of the Orange Pi Prime is a little bit shy of an Intel Celeron M processor, but far better than the PowerPC 740 and 750. Let's run the InQueen's CPU benchmark. Among the maker boards that I currently have, I've used an Odroid XU4, I have a Raspberry Pi 2, a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus, an Asus Tinkerboard, and a Liber Computer Renegade. I've also messed around a little bit with a Banana Pi R2, and I have a Pine64 Rock Pro 64 that I'm super excited to test out, as I think that could make a pretty sweet little network-attached storage device, and maybe even turn it into a combination media server home theater PC. Once again, results are in seconds and lower is better. And the Orange Pi Prime clocked in 39.33. That's not too shabby. Now let's go with an FPU FFT benchmark. There are a ton of these little maker boards around, and I do like when different maker boards kind of adopt pie in the name, like the banana pie and the orange pie. I'm really hoping that someone creates a dev board called the moon pie, maybe the pumpkin pie, but that's just me and my quirky sense of humor. Results are in seconds, lower is better, and the Orange Pie Prime clocked in almost a full minute on that, so that's kind of slow. Still, it's really tough to complain, and the Orange Pie Prime consistently in its benchmarks has remained competitive with most of the other single boards in this price range. Finally, let's run an FPU ray tracing benchmark. In addition to the Orange Pi Prime, there are a number of other boards manufactured by Orange Pi, including the Orange Pi Zero, and that one is a little more akin to the Raspberry Pi Zero, so it's definitely aimed at some more of those IoT applications, whereas the Orange Pi can be used for some more advanced projects that you can take on. In its FPU ray tracing benchmarks, the Orange Pi was pretty much on par with an Intel Celeron M processor running at 1.5 gigahertz. So ultimately, I'm pretty pleased with this little board and what it can do, especially for the price. And I definitely plan to keep messing around with it. I'm hoping next to make a small home theater PC arcade combo using one of the Android images that are available. 
But let me know what you think about the Orange Pi Prime and what maker boards you're using and what projects you'd like to see me take on next.